Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Um, my first thing about my little technology, you if you have it on speaker view, unfortunately, you'll see a different screen. You won't actually see me because I have a phone and a computer set up. So try to pin me so that you can actually see my face right now. And then later on, I'll actually turn on the phone so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm trying to get this technology thing together. Michael's going to help me with that as well. We, we also, um, just in case somebody doesn't know how to pin something. So oh, yeah, yeah. that means, and I, I'll be honest with you, in the beginning of Zoom, I didn't know that either. I was always like, oh man, I can't get, when I talk, then you got to look at me. But if you right. pin Bethany's face, not pin her face, pin her, the screen you see her <laughs> face, you'll see there's three little dots when you go to her box, right? When you go to the Bethany image, three dots when you click over it, right? It's, you know, the little three dots on the top. If you click on that, there's a thing that says pin, and then you can pin that person to the first video you see. So then that means that face will be there even when I'm talking. So right now, if you just have speaker view on, you're seeing me, but if you pin Bethany, you're gonna see her the whole time. And then yeah. she is gonna be at one point, she'll be using a different uh, camera angle. We're gonna ask you to pin that one. So that way you can see that one, okay? And that's the last I'm gonna say, I promise, bye. Yeah, yeah, we won't, we won't talk about that too much. Oh, also um, just let me know when you want me to put the color wheel up, Bethany. Okay, I will. Okay, thank you. So I'm excited about this class. And there's so many things to, um, to talk about when it comes to color theory. And I feel like people kind of just want to talk about uh, the color wheel and that's it. And so, but relating the color wheel to actually what we do in makeup, I feel like that's the missed part that we, we don't get. We get the basics, but we don't understand how that connects to what we do. And so I'm excited about talking about that. Uh, the, the order of what we're going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about theory, go over terms. Michael's going to show a wheel. We're going to talk about the actual wheel, what it means, how it, how it actually works. Then we're going to talk about the actual relationship to makeup and how it affects how we do makeup. And then I have a couple exercises that we might not have time to go through and do them all, depending on time, how time goes. But you'll at least have these, these, um, these things that you can do in between until we get together again October 5th. How's that sound? Sounds exciting. And I have lots of visuals for you too. Um, I made sure that I put a lot of different things around. So I'll be showing things in the computer. And then I also, when I turn the camera around, I'll be showing them in the other view. So if you ever have any problems, um, Michael is on the chat. So you'll, I won't be looking at the chat because that's like too much for me to try to manage. <laughs> but Michael be, will be on the chat. He'll be able to tell you whether or not, or he'll relay to me that there's an issue. So I'll start first. I'm excited to get started. So we're just gonna jump right in because we already 10 minutes in. So the first thing we're gonna talk about with color theory is understanding that color theory, whenever you talk about theory, theory is like the science of something, right? I hate it when I took mu music theory because theory, I was like, wait, we don't get to play instruments? It was only about the study of actually what it really meant and what was involved in it. So same thing with color theory. The theory and color mixing are two different things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about both of those today. Um, theory is really about discussing the, um, the science behind it and the art are different and how, that, how you use those colors. So when we talk about color terms, we'll first start off with um, color association. Association is something that we are, we are taught, we learn uh, throughout our life. We, we associate colors with different, th different things. So you think about red and you think about fire and passion and love, or you think about um, an apple. These are things that you learn, but are also associated with when they bring different kinds of emotion when you start talking about um, excited energy. Uh, same thing with, with blue. When you think about the sky, and you think about how um, the ocean is blue, but then you relate uh, an emotion with it. With, when you talk about how calm something is, or tranquil, or serene. So these are uh, associations. So you have associations with actual physical objects, and you also have associations with emotions. And they've used these associations to kind of help sell things, promote things, but they also use them in makeup to kind of, uh, again, bring out emotions, make things pop, make you uh, feel certain things. That's typically what artists do in all aspects of art when they use color, is trying to get you to feel something. 
we're also going to talk about uh, different color models. So when I say different color models, where a lot of times you always hear about red, yellow, and blue. Those are our primary colors. We'll talk again more specifically about those in a minute. But there's also sometimes people get confused because you see, like maybe on your printer ink, you'll see cyan, yellow, and magenta, or you'll see on your TV, you'll see RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So those are what they call color models. And it just means that those are the main colors that they use to create other colors from. So red, green, and blue are usually typically used for light. So when you're talking about your TV screens, when you're talking about you're working in camera and television, that's a light reference that you kind of need to be familiar with. You don't need to know too many specifics, but you at least need to be familiar about what that means and that there is a difference between that and what you do in makeup. The cyan, magenta, and yellow, I actually feel like it's only you typically used in, in printing or um, any kind of processing. A lot of artists kind of use it, but they usually stick to your red, yellow, and blue. I feel like if we kind of embrace and know, have knowledge on both of those, it kind of, again, expands your, your range of ability to, ability to manipulate color and be able to get it to do what you want it to do. Color temperature. So when we talk about temperatures of color, temperature is like whether something is warm and cool. That is, in, when we're talking in reference of color, this is what they're referring to. Whether your color is uh, leans to a warmer side or leans to a cooler side. Typically cooler is a little more blue. Typically warmer is a little bit more um, yellow, like a, think of a candlelight. If you think of blue, think of your, your sunlight. Typically, or like an overcast day when you're outside, that light has a tendency to be a little bit more blue. Or if you're thinking of a warmer temperature, like I said, like a candlelight wedding or when it's a little, has a little golden tone to it. I feel like those are the basic ones that I wanted to talk about, color harmony. We'll talk more about color harmony when we start talking about the wheel. So I'm gonna let Michael put the wheel up and then we're gonna go through our color wheel so that can, we can really get to the nitty gritty of things. Let me try that. Let me see if I can do it right. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Whose baby is unmuting them? <laughs> Whose baby is unmuting them? <laughs> That's the best. I ran over those terms pretty quickly. I hope you guys got those. And again, if you have any questions, Michael is there to uh, check out everything. But I think our basic terms that we really want to focus on are the ones that actually show up on our color wheel. And so the first term we'll talk about is our primary colors, right? Our red, our yellow, and our blue. And they call them primary colors because these are the colors that are not made by anything else, right? You can't um, you can't make blue with any other color of the color wheel. You can't make yellow with any other color on the color wheel. That's what that means. So it even says on here, cannot be mixed from any other color. And it's just specifically, again, talking about this, this color wheel. So our secondary colors are mm -hmm. the colors, our orange, our green, and our violet that are made by mixing our primary colors. So if we take our, our blue, and our yellow, what is in the middle of our blue and our yellow, our green. What is in the middle of our blue and our red is our violet, right? In the middle of our red and our yellow is our orange. So those are our six basic colors that you usually work with the most. Then we're going to go into our tertiary colors. Our tertiary colors are, we usually have a combination of the actual name of the colors that are mixed with it, right? So our tertiary colors are say, your yellow and your, where's it go? I was getting my mess up. Your yellow and your orange, in between those two, it says yellow orange, right? In between your yellow and your green, it says yellow green. And this is basically what they consider a 12 color color wheel. So it will go based, all it has on your 12 color color wheel are your primaries, your secondaries, and your tertiaries. You get more advanced when you start to add in your tints and tones and, and uh, shades. And that's when you start adding in black and white into this. 
and that's on the other side of your color wheel. We'll talk about those in a second. So underneath your tertiary, it goes in to start talking about warm and cool. Now, when we think warm and cool, this is again, this color wheel is set up basically for artists. So it comes from an art background. Makeup, we have a tendency to adjust terms in a different way. And same thing with TV, television, they use terms. It's the same term, but they just use it and it has a slightly different meaning. So if we know that in basically in art, our warms are our red, orange, and our yellows. Our cools are our greens, blues, and violets. So even on this color wheel, it tells you about, my color wheel says something a little different. This one says aggressive and receding. Mine says advancing and receding. Same thing. They're using the warm colors that come forward and they'll use the cooler colors to come back, to pull things back. Same thing with, with them when we're thinking of makeup. Usually we use those um, cooler colors. When you think about your contour, those are usually your cooler shades that are, we use to receive, right? And so our brighter colors or our highlights are usually are a little warmer and they come forward. Hue is just what they call the color. So hue is the name of blue, the name of yellow, the name of red. Those are just actual the names. So when people talk about the hue of something, now you understand what that term actually means. Value is one of the things that I feel like is really going to be the, it's almost like the key to you understanding foundations and how to manipulate them and how they actually work and how to understand color. When you understand a value of something. So on this particular chart, you'll see that there's a value of grace. There's like a little gray scale in the middle of the of the chart and in that gray scale it goes from value one all the way to value 10 and all that means is 10 is like you're 100 percent black and everything in the middle and value one is your 100 percent white so you can mix your if you mix 50 percent of your white and 50 percent of your black together you would get right in the middle of that at value five and then lightening up to would get you to value one and darkening it up would get adding more black as you go would get you to value 10. So when you think about your foundations, you think about how that color changes and how you can lighten it, how you can darken it. This should help you make that make a little bit more sense. And I'll actually show you some actual physical as we keep going. Is this making sense to you guys so far? Do I get some thumbs up, some shaking of heads? Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna go and talk about intensity of color. So the intensity or saturation of color, of saturation of your pigment. So how strong is that yellow, right? The 100%, it's all yellow. And then as it lightens up, again, we start talking about value. How, you, how much white have you added to that, to that yellow is changing its saturation and changing the value of it. How much black have you added to it is the same thing. So it's 100% of the yellow, but the more you add black to it, the more the saturation has changed and has darkened. Next, we'll talk about tints, tones, and shades. So our tints, same thing as we were talking about our values before, tints are colors plus white. So remember I was talking about that yellow and how you lighten it, that is what your tint is. Tones are when you add gray to a color. So you'll take your yellow and you'll just mix your white and black together and then you'll change it. And that kind of eases the, the transition a little bit more. You're not going straight from your yellow to your a white and straight from your black to your, ye your yellow to your black. You're adding that gray in to kind of, again, have more control over it. Your shade is your color plus black. So understanding those terms and how people use them Tints, tones, and shades can be kind of crucial because people use those in different in different ways and different terms. But as far as how this color wheel is is made, your tints are plus white, your shades are plus black, and your tones are plus gray. It says neutral gray is a balanced combination of black and white, and again, that's just a an added term on here. I think. We have gone through all the terms that are actually physically on the color wheel. Next, we'll talk about color harmony. And when we talk about color harmony, I'll actually show you, and then I'll show you on the back of my color wheel. You can take that color wheel down, Michael. 
and I'll show you on the back of the color wheel that I have. Oh, good. We have plenty of time. I'm so glad. I kind of raced through those terms. If anyone needs clar clarification on any of those, I kind of went fast because I wanted to get to the fun part. But in that... Also, I'm also just going to mention um, that the pocket color wheel is the best investment you're going to make in your oh career, goodness. other than the, the Terry Tomlinson uh, color wheel, which is amazing. Very different <laughs> purposes and very different uh, reasons to have them. So pick up your Terry Tomlinson amazing color wheel, uh, which is the foundation one. And then also this is this is every artist's best friend, this color wheel. They're very inexpensive. You can go to, um, to Blick uh, to get that on, for art supplies. Um, they're, they're really just, you use them constantly. Keep it in your kit. It's amazing. So then yeah. all those terms are there. And uh, again, of course, I'm sure you're taking notes too. But yeah, a lot, lot of information. Uh, thank you, Bethany, for that. Yeah, and it's, it's so handy to have that information right at your fingertips with you all the time. Uh, the pocket wheel, you, were, you would be surprised how, much, how often you can refer to it and it would actually help you through your makeup. So like I said, I wanted to continue to go through the terms and then I'll actually show you a little bit about how all these terms and how all these things kind of relate to our makeup. So as we go through this, we'll talk about complementary colors. So most of us have gone through a color wheel before. You know about how complementary colors work. You know that your complementary colors are the colors that are exactly across from each other on the wheel. So your reds and your greens, those colors are considered your complementary colors, which they, means they complement each other and they vibrate strongly against each other, right? So these colors kind of really promote each other, if that makes sense. So then you have your blue and your orange. Your blue and your orange are your complementary colors and your violet and your yellow. So when we talk about makeup and we talk about these complementary colors, these are the colors that make brown. I feel like the class should more be called make brown than color theory, but color theory sounds so much better. But for makeup, we really need to be able to perfect the art of making brown, understanding what is involved in brown and not just working from the browns that someone else has created because it makes more sense to you when you actually made it yourself because then you know, oh, this, when you look at something that someone else has made, you can already tell this is more red or this is more yellow, or I know what I need to do to adjust this to make it make, uh, to make it make sense for what I need it for. So our complementary colors, then we'll talk about our split complementary. So split complementaries more so refer to like, if you think about your eyeshadows, so our eyeshadows have come in like either trios or quads, which is refers to your, uh, I think the term is called tri, um, tetrad. It's called tetrad. So the tetrad means four. It's just four colors. There's usually a square in reference to this. I don't know if you can see my little, but there's a little square in the middle of, it, of the color wheel and it actually connects four colors. So it would be your yellow, your orange, your violets and your blue. And those are your four colors in your Tetris. So typically your eyeshadows will have three or four colors that kind of work really well together. Sometimes they'll do just three and or two and then they'll put a neutral in so that you can still manipulate those colors. I'll show you a good example like, um, let's see what I have here. I have some good ones. So I have Senna. Senna has a good, I haven't even opened this, right? <clears throat> This kind of hits on all the points that we talked about. We talked about color association and how we associate colors with feelings or emotions or things. And so this is actually, this palette that is actually called Wind. So it's again, already giving you an association, promoting you with a certain feeling. Let me take this plastic off so you can see a little bit better. But in this, <clears throat> they have put four colors together. And when, I, when we talk so strongly about colors, we're thinking about this 100% uh, saturation and intensity of color, but they have just dialed down the intensity. So no, it's not gonna be a straight red, a straight blue, a straight yellow, but they have that yellow tone to them. They may have a little blue tone to them or a little brown or a little, um, a little orange, a little green. Does that make sense? And I ask that a lot. I stay, still shake heads even though I can't see everybody, but me and I, I've gotten that back from James where we always stop and we're like, does that make sense? Does that make sense? 
but again, I have this, and I also have uh, another palette for the same thing, Earth. Already giving you that color association. <clears throat> and it's the same thing. It's about the different tones in the browns. So this brown has a little bit more of a red tone to it. This one has a little bit more of a bluer tone to it. And these are a little bit more of a neutrally, I think this is more like a greener, a greener brown. It's hard again for me to exactly say too because my lights actually project on here and kind of change the color a little bit. So I have a, um, a yellow light and it's actually changing the colors of things. So if you, when we go through demonstrations and you see things and it doesn't quite look exactly how I'm describing, that could be why too because the lights actually do affect the colors and how they show up. So we talked about complementary, split complementary, and tetrad. Triad was the three colors. I think it was uh, the three colors that are spaced apart from each other on the color wheel. And I think most of the time in makeup, we think of monochromatic analogous colors. So monochromatic means that it's all in that same color family. So if we're doing, say we're doing a lip, we're doing red lip, you have red cheek, and you do like a reddy brown shadow. Right? That's what you would talk about when you think about your monochromatic. It's all in that same, that same color family. And when we think about our analogous colors, we're thinking about colors that are adjacent to each other. Right? So now we're going with a, say, a red lip, an orange cheek, and maybe your orange or your gold shadow, gold liner, something, maybe a gold, uh, a pretty gold highlight. Right? So you're using those colors together. And they all, typically with um, analogous colors and monochromatic, those are very pleasing to the eye, very easy to uh, make connections with and very easy to associate with. Oh, sorry, I just saw the, the comments. <clears throat> with our, with our complementary colors, Think about how complementary colors are used in all of your advertising, all of your sports teams, all of your holidays, um, typically your, your Christmases, your red and your green, your Easter is using yellow and, um, and purple, yellow and lavender, your, um, even your orange juice. Your orange juice will use, say, your reds and your greens, your uh, favorite soda will use your colors from your color world or use your reds and your your blues or reds and your greens to kind of again, promote because these are things that connect with you and really resonate and make sense and you hold on to whereas in your again, bethany your, i just want to interrupt really quick and remind everybody that bethany's using two monitors right now one so you can see her desk and one so you can see her face so if you would like to make sure that you are um, always uh, seeing what she is focusing on right now which is the color wheel. Um, she's not gonna show the color wheel on the screen with her face because she's showing it in the other screen, which is uh, show, facing. Yeah, if, you, if I showed it in my face, it would be like a glare. I don't think you would really be able to see it well. So, so I was trying to show it. Yeah, just on, so just make sure way. that you, you can either pin or put it on speaker view. If you have it on speaker view and everyone's muted, like they are, thank you guys. If you have it on speaker view and not pinned, then, um, it still wouldn't work because she doesn't have the volume on on her on the other monitor. So you want to just go ahead and pin the video that she is now showing the color wheel in that says B Towns, but not the one with her face in it, the one with her hands in it. If you <laughs> pin that, if you pin that video, you're going to be able to see all the stuff that she's focusing on for the next little bit. Okay. Yeah, we won't be able to. You won't be able to look at me anymore. You don't need to. Uh, the rest of what we're going to talk about is like actual physical doing things. I just wanted to say hi to you guys and show you my gorgeous face in the beginning, but the rest of this program will all be where my hands are. Thanks, Michael. I forgot to make sure I let them know to change their view as I started talking. So now that we've gone through the wheel and we've talked about all the terms, now we want to talk about how does, what does this mean for products? Like why do, why do I need to know all these terms? What does it have to do with our product? It affects us as artists in how we purchase products and then what we do with the product after we purchase it. So someone has told you along the way somewhere that you need to have these color correctors, that you needed to have 
these colors that don't make sense to you, these greens, these purples, these yellows, or um, even in powders. So you have this uh, Make the Forever Towel, which I don't think they make anymore. I'm so sorry. I'm showing things that they probably don't have anymore. But I love this tower. Alice is on here, so she can tell you, tell you if it really is still available. But this has um, your pink, your green, and your lavender colors in it. So you're like, why do I need these? What do these make? How do these even make sense? Like, what is the purpose of having something that's so bright when they don't even match anyone's skin tone? Taking those colors, and so what I'm going to do, which I hope you can see really well, is I'm going to use some Cinema Secrets here. So this is, I'll show you a couple of different things. So first, I feel like a lot of times in our color theory classes, we will go from our basic red, yellow, and blue and teach you how to make um, foundation, how to make your color foundation. But I don't know if that's as, as, as helpful to you as knowing how to manipulate the foundations that you have. Every time you're out, you're not always going to, like the ideal situation is not going to be creating foundation from that. You're going to create, you're going to adjust the foundation from where you already are. This is to keep you from having 40 shades. So yes, Wonderful Makeup Forever makes 40 shades plus of foundation, but you do not need to carry the 40 shades. Same as Cinema Secrets. They make such a wide range of shades. You don't need to carry them all. You just need to know how to adjust them to be able to do what you need to do. Does that make sense to everyone? So I'm going to start with um, showing you, like, I'm just going to take this, this is one of our lighter colors, and I'm going to put it, it's on this white paper, and I'm going to try to make it, I might even have to use it on my arm, so that makes a little bit more sense. Always, whenever you're doing a color project, you should want to clean off your knife or whatever your tool is. You can do these tools with anything. You can use them. Uh, I have an art knife here. You should have a uh, Cinema Secrets makes an amazing palette knife and a silver palette. I felt like the silver palette was going to reflect too much, so I didn't use that here in this case. But when you're working, typically sanitarily, especially now with COVID, you're going to use your, your palettes. You can use Q-tips um, to help you if you're practicing at home. You can even use them, of course, in real life scenarios because you can throw those in the trash. So I'm just going to take the three colors that are in here. And even, this is something that you should do when you're at home, whether you're testing product on your arm, whether you're testing it on paper. When you see it on a paper, you can actually see the difference in the colors a little bit more, right? So now I know what is happening with these colors, how I can adjust them to get them to do what I want them to do. So if I'm working on my skin, if I take this, this orange and I put it on my skin, I can now see that that is pretty close, but there needs to be some adjustments so that it actually blends into my skin, correct? So we can actually use the color correctors or we can use these fabulous things that we've gotten from wonderful brands that have provided, that know that we use color in that way, or you have the MAC has a color palette. I think theirs is mostly, the only difference in these palettes is the bases that they're made out of, right? This one is more of a wax or a talc base, talc powder base. This is an old one. This is a mineral oil base. Their new ones are actually silicone based. And that's, I'm actually not sure. I feel like they're an oil, but it's a different oil because it's not, it doesn't have as much slip as in the photo. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that one, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm gonna show you with these, how to adjust the color, and then I'm gonna show you with the correctors that are made by our company with that in mind, how you would adjust these colors, right? So if I take, again, this is my arm. If I take this color, it looks a little, a little orangey, a little peachy, right? So my adjuster would be more of something probably we think more straight to the yellow, right? So I'm going to go straight in with a little bit of these pigments we know are super strong. So if I add it in, or add it in very little at a time, because you don't want it to take over right away. And this is an exercise where we have time to play, we have time to practice. 
So you're just gonna keep blending until it kind of disappears into the skin. That's actually pretty close. Maybe a little, still see a little line. You can almost tell exactly where it stops. And either add a little more yellow to that. Or this is when you would actually go and probably add a little blue to kind of cool it down. It might be a little bit too warm. Remember your blue is super strong. So I probably wouldn't go straight with blue. I would take my blue, mix it with a little white to kind of soften that, that punch. And then go in. I didn't wipe off my palette knife. And as I mix that in, it literally almost disappears into my skin. And this again is just showing you how to work with the things that you already have and how you can manipulate them and just and adjust them. So if you look at this paper, this actually looks really warm. This looks really, really neutral. And this looks, these look very similar to me as, as far as tone. Like they, st they still look very neutral. This one just looks like a lighter version of that neutral. So when they're neutral, it typically means that they have a balance of your yellow, your red, and your blue in them. They're not leaning more towards your red. They're not leaning more towards your blue. They're a little bit more balanced, right? So if I had a client who had more of a yellow or olive undertone, I'm going to go in and mix some of my, my yellow in, correct? Or I can take these wonderful, this atelier makes a, great adjusters. There are quite a few companies that make adjusters, but this just to understand why you, when you go to a brand, they have something that is this yellow and something that is this red, right? These are adjustment colors. They have one that's a little lighter yellow. It's a little easier to work with. I always recommend that you test out colors. If it's, again, not, if it's not on your arm, than on a piece of paper. When I say that, I mean, I have examples of whenever I get colors from different companies, I always test them out to see what the color is actually going to do on the paper. So as I said, testing it on your skin really helps you understand like what is happening. So when you, whatever, whatever base the material is made out of, that, that color is made out of, like these were, alcohol, this was um, a different type of paint, this was an acrylic paint. Again, understanding what they do on the paper is the same way you need to figure out whether you're working with a synthetic or whether you're working with a, um, a talc or powder-based product and see how that actually moves and works and blends together on your skin, right? I'm using it on paper. I could do also an example. I don't know if you can see this one really well, but I did the same thing with the Makeup Forever, the MAC, and the Cine, using those colors side by side. A cool thing to note, too, is that all reds are not created equal, all yellows are not created equal, and same thing with all blues. So when you buy, even though red, yellow, and blue are your primary colors, they're not always the same uh, the same tone to them. Some of them will have, and I'm using tone in the wrong, I already gave you a definition of what tone is. I didn't use it in the right way. But this will have, sometimes it'll lean as temperature wise. Sometimes it'll lean a little bit more warm and it'll lean a little bit more cool. So it just depends on your manufacturer, how they actually work. Ah, oh, somebody said swatches from Lowe's. Yes, yes, yes. We'll talk about those. Um, understanding how those colors mix together. So I actually will use just the, the Makeup Forever, mix those together and see what happens. I would do the same with your MAC or with your center. And I show you this, this is just the primaries, but you should do this with your foundations as well. How do they mix together? What happens when you mix those colors together? What is it going to show you? So when I take this back to this uh, reference here, 
of using your colors that are a little bit more neutral and I felt like maybe needed a little bit more yellow. So if I use this lighter yellow from Face Atelier, it's a lighter, I think that one was considered a concealer. Actually, she didn't put concealer on it, which is awesome. She, all she says on it is skin perfecting color corrector. So a lot of times you'll have to remember as artists that they've labeled things to make it consumer friendly. So I believe that your, oh, this says color corrector too, which I'm, I'm actually really surprised at. This one says camouflage cream, but I think we can interpret that as in it can be used for anything. A lot of times the brands, these are more pro brands. So more pro brands lean to language that is artist friendly and consumer friendly. So a lot of times when you'll buy from say your Sephora that are geared towards your, your uh, consumers, it'll actually say corrector or it'll say, it won't say corrector, it'll say concealer on it. And so you'll use these as a, as a concealer. They used to use yellow a long time ago underneath the eye, which was horrible. I don't know if you ever watch Hallmark, but for some reason I feel like they still do it from time to time. It's my favorite channel to watch, but they still have a tendency to use yellow underneath the eye as concealer. So all I'm doing right now is mixing that same color in with the yellow, more like a, almost like a 50-50 ratio. Of course, if you're working in real life on a real person, you wanna be, you wanna be as, um, as light-handed as possible if you go too far too fast sometimes you have to end up backing up and correcting so if you usually do just a little bit at a time you can catch it before it goes too far in the in the wrong direction right that yellow is actually a really good adjuster it adjusted it just enough to give it a little bit more warmth to not take it so and i know this may be tough for you guys to see with the camera with the lighting in real life it definitely will show you different but these are just things that you should do when you're at home you need to be playing with your product as much as possible i probably should have done this class before everyone cleaned out all of their old makeup and redid all of their kits and and got ready for their their covid kits this would have been a good thing for you to do but even with product that you use on an everyday basis you should know how it moves how it functions, how you can change it and manipulate it in every scenario. So whether you're using it on paper, whether you're using it on your hands or your arms or your face, like you should be able to, to have a better understanding of how you can, how much, how much product you need to do to adjust it. So I'm gonna take this darker yellow, it's a little deeper in the yellow family and It has adjusted that color. Just an, again, you can see it side by side where it has changed the tone of it just enough where it's a little deeper. And then imagine if I had that black and that white, if I needed to go lighter or if I needed to go darker, I have that ability to change this color to so many other colors just by making that small adjustment, right? Does that help you guys as far as foundations and understanding like what these what these colors can do to help you adjust. So say you take, this This is one of everybody, I feel like this is everybody's favorite. It was a favorite palette of mine for a long, long time. I still use it from time to time. This palette has probably foundations that match perfectly to someone's skin, but they may need to have adjustment either deeper or they have adjustment a little lighter. This, these two colors have a tendency to be used more as correctors um, when you think about what's underneath the eye, when we talk about making brown and making neutrals. So I'm going to teach you now about making brown, what that means as far as um, these colors, how these colors work. So we're going to go back to our flash palette, or it doesn't necessarily have to be flash. You can be whatever company gives you some pri good primary colors to do some mixing with. When you take your colors, and remember we talked about our complementary colors and how they vibrate strongly together, but our complementary colors actually neutrally, neutralize each other out. So if we take, I don't know if I have 
enough time to do all of that on here too. But this is what's showing our how our red and our yellow make our orange, our yellow and our green make uh, yellow and our blue make our green, and how our red and our blue make purple. Right. So we talked about that our primaries and our secondaries. So now we're going to take these and mix them, our complementary colors, mix them together. So if I take my red. I'm going to get a new piece of paper. So like I said, making brown, right? We're going to take our red, maybe make a bigger swatch so you can see. That's your red, right? We're going to take our complementary color to that would be your green. We're just going to use the green straight over here. I'm not going to make it just for time's sake. We have our red and our green, and we mix the green that they've given us, and we take our red. And remember, this is paper, so of course, the paper absorbs some of the color. So we're going to have to use a little bit more color just to get it to go the direction that we want it to go. It's not going to act the exact same on skin. It's already looking a little a little muddy brown. Can you guys see that? It's already showing you that really like ready brown. Even if I did it on my skin, same thing. So I took this red. This is my palette, so I couldn't actually stuck my finger in it. I was trying to be sanitary. I was like, oh, I don't want to stick my finger in the product in front of everybody. Um, and put the red right on my skin. If I take the green, I should love a Q-tip that has both sides. If I take that green right in there. And of course, this is not matching my skin tone. This is just giving you a more ready brown. If I have more red in it, it'll be more red brown. If I have more green in it, it'll almost be like more of a quality brown. But with this, you don't see either one. You don't see the red or you don't and you don't see the green. So they've can they've kind of canceled each other out. Same thing if I do let's say my favorite is the blue and the orange. So in here, in this palette, this orange is not actually that orange. It's more of like a peachy, so it's a lot lighter. Um, I have a tendency to like to use the red and the yellow together because they'll make a difference. If I use this red and this yellow together, they make a different color of orange. Michael, how's everyone doing? Any, any questions so far? Is everybody okay? Sorry, had to unmute myself. I'm trying to be. <laughs> um, yes, you can take pictures. Sorry, Kristen, you can take photos for sure. Oh yeah, you can take his, You can take photos. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, just what was the name of the Mac palette or the colors from the Mac palette? Ah, oh, this is called. Oh, these are the paint sticks. They just put the paint sticks in an actual palette. So they sell them individually, but they put them in there. So this says paint stick 12 palette. Okay. And I still, I can't remember for the life of me what the base of those paint sticks were, but I'm pretty sure it was an it oil is, base. It is an oil base. It's the That's one awesome. I did for them when I was there 18 years ago. <laughs> so before that, like 20 years ago, we did the, the color cream, the, the paint sticks yeah. and, and all that. So I, I, the formulation has changed, but it is an emollient base. Okay. And so look at the difference between this orange that I made and this orange that, did I have blue one? I sure did. That was a bad example because I just mixed the blue one already. But looking at those two colors side by side, 
can you see the difference in those two and how one is deeper and one is lighter? Mm -hmm. So understanding that you're not limited. So just because they gave you this peach in here and you need something a little deeper, you still have the ability to make that, that deeper orange that you need. So we're gonna take that orange, again, we're talking about making brown. So to make brown, we're gonna mix blue, right? I'm gonna actually mix blue into both of these. And when I say, when I use blue, I use blue like so sparingly because it's such a strong color and takes over so quickly. In the paper, sometimes it'll observe, it'll absorb the oil a little differently. So sometimes it'll react well, and sometimes it won't. But it's actually going, it's getting pretty neutral. It's not absorbing the color. But it's showing you that it's more of a cooler, a cooler brown. Same with our, if we use this orange, right? And we take this blue, which I probably should, I might need a little bit more blue for that one. And again, it neutralized it right to the point where it is back to brown. I'll show you on skin. Just as a quick example, if I take this, I'll take this orange. You can see about how orange it is on my skin. And then I'll take this blue. Which I may have grabbed a little bit too much blue. No, that's not bad. It has neutralized it to the point where it is a brown. So I can take this brown now and not necessarily for my skin tone, but for any, if I needed to make an adjustment to that, I could go in to make it, again, change that value and make it lighter by adding whites to it. Or I can make it darker. Do I have some here? Not much. I'm going to run out and then add a little black to it. Only difference with working with Q-tips instead of a palette knife is it absorbs some of your, some of your product as well. But again, just showing you how you can manipulate that color to give you the range that you need. Last but not least is most, um, seems to be the, the favorite I think I lean more towards using blue and orange as my adjusters the most, but a lot of people like the using your yellows and your lavender. So this palette doesn't come with a purple or a lavender. The MAC one does. And even the Senna, Senna, Senna has like a light lavender here. But in your Makeup Forever, you can of course create your lavender or your purple. I say lavender because it's a little easier sometimes to manipulate. Remember we talked about diluting the color so that the intensity isn't so strong. We know that blue is so strong and it takes over right away. So if I take my blue and mix it with my red, A little more blue. I'm always so chintzy with the blue because that takes over so quickly. A lot of people forget too that every skin tone is made up of red, yellow, and blue. Some level of blue is in there 
to create the balance. So that is like a almost like a more violety. And so we'll take this. And so uh, I recommend that you would lighten that by using a little white in it. And then once you add the white, you can actually see that it goes a little bit more purple. Mixing that with your yellow. That immediately goes to a pretty golden brown super quick. That was really, really fast, right? And I said, this one I feel like is the fastest to get to your, to your brown roll and the easiest to make your adjustments. Um, the orange and the, the blue have a tendency to give you a little bit more work and get your most work out of your red and your, your green. But once you start to play with them a lot, you'll become a master at manipulating and you'll know exactly how much I need to put, how little I need to put. I can just keep adding yellow. To get your brown. It's a little closer to my skin tone. So when I do a little yellow, my skin and then I go in with let me try this lighter one. I don't know if I have moved enough. I try this and mix it in. Let me see that. Still has a little bit of the purple in there, so I could probably take a little more yellow. I feel like I see, at least my eyes, I see a little bit more of the lavender showing through. Bethany, just real quick, I want to jump in for a second. Um, uh, as a, a quick reminder to everybody, you know, lots of questions and chatting about, you know, what the base of the foundation is or things like that. That's a that's a whole discussion that really we can't answer through chat at this point in time. You have to do your research. You have to understand if you're making a foundation and incorporating, um, uh, you know, another product into that. You need to understand the base of that. Super happy Alice is here. She's able to answer questions about the makeup forever stuff. So thank you for that. Um, but just oh, remember, yeah, thank you. A session about color theory. And you can use paints to practice this. Royal and Lanical gives us a great discount. They make paints as well as brushes. Um, so you can get the 40, they're 40% plus another 10% off. They were really generous to us for Makeup 101. Thank you, Royal and Lanical. Uh, but again, remember, this is about color theory. And, and even if you're just playing with the colors and you've got you know, the Senna or the Makeup Forever or a MAC one, wor worry as much about you know, the, what's the ingredient and if they combine well together when you're actually using it as a product to apply to skin, uh, to apply to a client where it needs to last. From the standpoint of trying to figure out how to mix and match colors to create brown, really at the end of the day, it's about the color plus the color. Right. So this is, um, you know, it's important to understand those pieces, but really for this session and for your practicing in create, maybe we should just call the next one making round Bethany because yeah. um, it's actually brilliant and it blows my mind every single time. And I'm terrible at this part. I can't even do this part at makeup 101. So, um, so just remember that just, I don't want to have, have us focus too much on the ingredients and what products work together. You know, if you're using a makeup for a product, it's going to work with other makeup for products. And so let's focus on the color piece of it, just as a standpoint um, for the rest of the session. Bethany, just so you know, we're coming up on just an hour now. So whatever time okay. you need. You know, more minutes to just kind of give you guys a little bit more basic. I really wanted to focus on product and makeup product because I, again, I feel like sometimes, and again, everybody's brain work, works differently, but I feel like some people have a tendency to understand color when you're just talking about color itself separately than how they understand how color works in makeup. 
So being able to understand why someone created this, this green corrector and what it's actually going to do for you, or why they make this powder, this purple, or this red, or this green, understanding why they made that. If you have a basic of color theory, then it makes these things make sense. It makes your purchases make more sense. So it's kind of why I was focusing on the color angle. And this is also why this is, can be a day class. This could actually be a class that could be extended into more than a day. If we add in practical time, if we add in time where you're actually working on people, if you're actually using and practicing. So of course, this could be a class that would last for forever. Um, you really need to practice on your own to reinforce the concepts of, of what these colors do and how you can manipulate them. So I showed you a little bit about makeup, but I also want to show you again, since someone brought up what the basis of colors are, are using it, do you, just using paints. Like if I have wonderful sponsor, Royal Land Nickel has given us, um, those of you who took Makeup 101, and I pull up my trash free, on my trash over here. Those of you who took Makeup 101 received uh, some of our, are familiar with some of our products from Royal and Nickel. I am familiar with them because I also do painting as well. So I'll use Liquitex Basics, I'll use oil paints, like any kind of paint, like it doesn't matter. So in this instance, it doesn't matter what your base is. Someone mentioned before about going to Lowe's. Lowe's people are not very happy with me, but I go in separate visits, so they don't know that it's always me taking all the swatches. I <laughs> see Eric, Eric's got her swatches, right. So a lot of times you hear people complain about not having skin tones to practice on. I mean, if you are not prepared for whoever comes to visit your market, then shame on you. Because you're, there's so many opportunities to practice um, making those colors and understanding what you do. So we can do it with foundations or you can do it with your basic, um, with your basic paints. So even though, and I kind of did it earlier, I was playing around. So green, we know green is not one of those colors that are our primaries. So making it, trying to figure out exactly what colors make green is, uh, I, I forget that paint dries darker than the actual color. So this was actual um, acrylic paint, so it dried a little darker than the color. It was pretty close. I was impre I impressed myself. Um, this was um, makeup. So you can see it because of the shine, but you can't see it because of the color because I mix it so well. But yeah, playing around with your swatches, I just did this with the Makeup Forever Flash. Playing around with your swatches, manipulating the color, trying to figure out if you can make this color, how quickly, timing yourself, that was my favorite, timing yourself, how fast can you do it? Or how fast can you break it down in your brain? You're like, oh, I know this color is red and white, but is it just red and white? What would I add to it to get it a little closer to this, right? Uh, makeup forever flash versus, uh, again, the flash versus the MAC palette, it's not, it doesn't matter what the product is. It's about knowing how to manipulate it, knowing how to work it to get it to do what you want it to do playing with it with other products to figure out. It depends on what your foundation base is that you use the most. So you have to kind of determine those things of which makes sense for your kit. If you like a silicone-based foundation, then you need to find a product that works well with that. If you like a foundation that has more of a talc or a powder base, you need to find what works with that. So it sometimes products work with all the things, but you have to figure that out yourself. You have to kind of play around and figure out uh, everything factors into that. Temperature factors into that. Somebody's skin type, someone's, um, what kind of prep you're putting on, what kind of setting stuff you're putting on top of it. So you can't really say, I hate when people are like, what's your favorite foundation? It depends on the whole scenario. It really does depend on uh, other, other factors. There has to be more questions mm -hmm. in there. My favorite foundation for what? Or when you say the flash palette versus MAC, for what? What am I using it for? All right. So back to this. Back to this wonderful guy. So now when you're doing your brown, so we'll take this like this brown here. This is gonna be a test for myself, right? Yeah, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm up for this challenge. <laughs> 
So I recommend that, remember we talked about exercises. So exercises, one exercise I recommend is making color wheels. Making a 12 point color wheel out of whatever product you have, whether it's a flash, whether it is a, I don't have one, I moved it. This is what happens when you move stuff and you have limited space. Oh, here it is. So whether it is, um, whether you're using paint, whether you're using the flash palettes or any other kind of color correctors, making your own color wheel, seeing how those colors mix together and how you can, um, how they combine. Then doing a value scale, seeing how they mix. If I take this red and mix it with white, how, how, how can I control that range of color? How much red do I need to add? Remember we talked about blue? The only way I knew that the blue was that strong was because I had played with it. So I knew that it was strong right away. Same thing with doing it with your red and your black. Manipulating so that you know how much black, that black takes over really quickly. How much black do I need to add to change that color, right? So when you're doing this, which one did I pick? I think I picked this one. I'm going to, 308, let's see if I can do this quickly. <laughs> We're gonna say, I'm gonna put the red, the yellow, and the blue on a different paper, just so that I can have a little more control. I feel like if I put them right on this card, I'll be in trouble for real. Always have a handy dandy paper towel nearby so that you can wipe off. But think of, again, we talk about how Foundation shades don't have the range that you want. Now, if you buy a foundation shade that doesn't necessarily, or you like a texture of a foundation, it doesn't have the shade that you want. Now you know how to make the shade that's in the middle. As long as you usually have, typically you have the lighter and the darker end of the spectrum, you can kind of manipulate. But we also know now that even if they don't have the darkest, as long as we have a black, we can kind of control it to make it a little bit deeper, right? I'm gonna take I'm gonna go with my with my yellow. So I feel like this is a little more yellow. And start with the red. And that red really took that intensity. I'll make sure you guys can see, sorry. Really made that really pretty orange, but I feel like maybe a little more yellow. Of course, um, what's important with any part of our art is blending, right? Blending, blending, mix, mix, mix. So I'm wiping this off. I'm going to go in with this blue now. I'm telling you, this blue scares me. It always goes crazy right away. The littlest, littlest thing of blue. And then. Yeah, that blue took it really quick. So because that blue took it so fast, look at, that looks more green, right? So what would we do to neutralize green? You can see it so much clearly now when you're like working, or you're like, oh yeah, it's green, so I need to add more red. Or Maybe I'll add more orange. You mix the red, make that red already orange. But I feel like I could probably go in with straight red because I made that. Um, yeah, now we're getting to a brown. So remembering the intensity of the color that we're working with. So we're working with paints. Paints have strong, strong pigment of color. So because they have such a strong pigment of color right away, it's not like it's not um, like foundation. Foundation have, has has uh, or these even our um, the pigments in our in our makeup are not quite as strong as with when you're dealing with regular paint. So because these have so much color in them, we're gonna have to, we're definitely gonna have to add that white in to lighten this tone. So 
I just took a smidge of yellow. And the only thing with this is you gotta make sure you get enough color because acrylic paint dries quickly. And you can play with these exercises all day. Like I really feel like making, making colors in this way is an activity that, I mean, you could have done this all of COVID. Because fun fact, uh, Isaac Newton created the color wheel or the concept of the color wheel while he was um, quarantined for plague back in the, pretty sure they said 1600s, but he was on, from what I was read, he was on quarantine during the plague stuck in the house trying to figure out what he was going to do with himself and decided to play with some piece of glass and which again made him come up with this whole concept of the color. So all of you should be geniuses by now after you've been in quarantine all this time. That was, that was a, a, a moral to the story. <laughs> the moral to the story was everyone should be as smart as him. But again, watching how, let me make sure that light reflection, see how I've lightened it. You can play with it. You know, the phone just fell on the trash can. Phone fell. Sorry, babe. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you. Yeah, so the phone fell in the trash can. <laughs> of course, I can't, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. It was great. Right, right, right. But again, these are just examples for you to be able to teach yourself how to, how to manipulate color. You should be practicing at home all the time, figuring out how you can better understand your product, understanding how it works, what you can do to um, understand the range, knowing a little bit about uh, where a product comes from as well. I feel like most brands that are made in the U.S. have a tendency to have more of a gold bin tone. Um, they love a gold, warm, sun-kissed kind of glow. Whereas in a lot of brands that are um, based in the UK have a tendency, and it's not, this is not a, uh, an all over rule, but they have a tendency to lean more pink. They like a little flesh, flush color, uh, pink to the skin. Um, they feel like a flush is a little bit more, uh, we think of flush like you're cold. They think of flush like a healthy young little kid, pink, rosy pink cheeks kind of thing. I have Lowe's with them walking this. Okay, everybody's going to Lowe's. Please don't get me in trouble the, the by going to I would Lowe's. Just, I, I just need to put a disclaimer in there. Um, feel free to also buy, like, you know, something to do it with, not steal from Lowe's. I am not validating or rationalizing the use of <laughs> Lowe's chips or anybody else's paint chips. Uh, you can do this with uh, a magazine. Like, pull a magazine out and start yeah. trying to match foundation shades of a model. Um, it's a, done something we did actually in the very, very beginning of the powder group. I was telling Bethany, we did use paint chips also, but you know, anything where you can have a range of shades, a range of color, maybe there's an, uh, you know, I asked somebody to do as a part of a coaching session, I had them take an old painting and I had them match all the shades in that painting with paint that are yes. coming just from primaries. So the more you practice, like Bethany said, the more you practice, this, whether it's with paint, whether it's with foundation, the more comfortable you get. You know, when you started out being a makeup artist, guys, you didn't automatically know what to reach for. You didn't look at a face and go, oh, that's the color, or that's what I need for a, for a highlight and contour. It's the same with this. But now, after years of doing makeup, you know exactly what brush to pull. You know exactly what product to take out of your kit. It's that way with this. It becomes second nature like it is for Bethany. When you looked at that, Bethany, you said, oh, it's a little too green. What's, what do we use to counter that? Red, 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 everybody in there. Exactly, right? But how much red did she need? She knew that because she's practiced this for a long time. It's not just the product, like she said. Blue is really strong. She has to use less. Yellow is less strong. She can use a little more. Black is really strong. Don't use too much. So practicing in this is such an important thing. And and, and as we're starting to wrap this session up, um, and not as a tease to the, to the next one, but I think that 
one of the things we've tried to do at the Powder Group over the last five months during the pandemic and during quarantine and all this difficulty is keep you busy, keep you guys busy. Um, I love that Bethany said, y'all should be uh, with the quarantine. We should be geniuses. Like we should be doing all this stuff and you should be. So I want you to not look at October 5th as, well, I can tuck this away until Bethany and James spend a day with me. What I want you to do is I want you to think I'm going to keep practicing and keep practicing and keep practicing with whatever, whatever I've got to practice with. Like I said, paints, acrylic, go get kids paints from CVS if you have to. Practice oh, yeah. With this idea. Because then when you come to us on October 5th and we spend, you know, we're going to be doing the session from 12 to 6 with a couple of breaks. It's a lot of time. The more practice you have between now and then, the more opportunity you're going to have to fine tune your work with James and Bethany's help in that session. So, um, as, as you know, I'm going to give you a chance to say any last final words of inspiration, Bethany. Um, but thank you, because this is always fascinating for me. Um, I, I am so grateful that you have done this with us at Makeup Alone and One so often. I'm so grateful you're doing it today and grateful that you agreed to do a, a full day hands on with us because that's going to be lots of fun. Um, so mm -hmm. final words from Bethany before we take a break and uh, come back at four o'clock for Joe Delude in most of our cases. I think the one thing that I would give you guys as your takeaway is that every time I took color theory, I've learned something new. So it didn't matter how many times I took the class, there was still something else that I took from it. So whether it was from um, a makeup perspective, whether it was from the art perspective, whether it was from digital, where I've taken a couple of, like that kind of blew my mind. I feel like the same with hair color, hairstylist, like everyone looks at color in a different way and being able to understand how people use color differently and how they manipulate it and, and, and work with it, how it makes sense to different people in different ways. The more you know, the, the easier it will be for you to be able to, um, to move forward in color theory and to use it to just do all the things, to do all the things. Awesome. That well, would be my one takeaway. Well, Again, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. There's so much more we can do. I was trying to cram as much information as we always do with the Power Group. We try to cram as much information as we can in the smallest amount of time. And I thank you guys for tuning in and dealing with my technical difficulties and all the things. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. And your, technical you difficulties, your technical difficulties were nothing, maybe. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so just so everybody knows, and I think Bethany's going to be with us for Joe's session hanging out. So oh, you, yes, you can throw her a note in the chat when she's back. So it is about 20 after three on the East Coast. We are going to be having our Joe Delude session, Transforming the Face, starting at 4 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, this session is the same uh, link. So I will not be ending this session. It will stay live. I will be muting and turning the video off on my camera. You're well, I would appreciate if you are gonna just keep your phone or your laptop linked in, please do turn your video and your, and your um, audio off, uh, but you can just keep your place right there or you can sign off and then sign back in using the exact same link that I sent you earlier uh, for the Bethany session, okay? So thank you again to Scandinavia, The Makeup Light, Cinema Secrets, Royal and Land Nickel, Senna Cosmetics and Temp2 for our free mm -hmm. TPG summer school sessions this year. Thank you, Bethany, and I'll see you again thank at four o'clock Bye guys. Bye.